All right, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, so this is uh, uh, this is very different, and uh, thanks for um, making up this meeting a part of your day. And uh, hopefully, everyone can uh, can hear me um, and is uh, um, safe uh, and sound wherever you are currently isolating and following the the social distancing uh, guidelines. Um, you know, uh, as I said in my uh, message on the, the last Canvas message, you know, I've been around a, a long time. It's a polite way of saying I'm old, but, you know, I've been around for um, epidemics and I've been around for a lot of circumstances, but, uh, but never a global pandemic. So this is uh, definitely new territory and things are changing um, and developing uh, in, in the moment, literally in real time. Um, I kind of borrow that uh, line from the governor, uh, who's really addressing a lot of those kinds of issues in real time as well. Um, you know, from an interest standpoint, one of those things that's uh, being solicited from our uh, school standpoint is what our 3D printing capacity is. Um, and so that's a, that's a, this afternoon, the, the question's gone out uh, system wide. How many 3D printers does the uh, community college system have? Um, in anticipation of uh, potentially claiming uh, our capacity, not necessarily taking the printers anywhere, but asking us to uh, be a part of uh, an effort to uh, 3D print things, perhaps for respirators, perhaps for face shields, um, you know, really hard to know. So literally this, um, this adjustment that we're making is, uh, is in real time. So um, I, I want to make sure that you know that uh, what I said and, and what's coming out of, of my uh, voice box right now is absolutely what I, what I wrote to you. And that is that, you know, I am and the school is uh, committed to uh, helping you uh, complete this semester. Um, as I said to drafting eight this morning, uh, the, the real shame of all of this is, is that uh, we're getting better at it. Um, at Butte College as the years go on because we've been through it uh, more than uh, one time. And um, that's not to take away anything of the events that have happened in the recent past. It's only to add the intensity that um, we've been through this before and it's, uh, it's challenging. So um, I, I share that with you just to make sure that uh, you know that uh, I'm, I'm consistent with what I'm saying and consistent with what's coming out of my voice that I, I, am committed to your uh, success in completing the semester. So um, in doing that, a couple things I wanna make sure you know. One is uh, that today's session is being recorded. So in case any of, uh, any of the students that you have contact with from drafting two are going, hey, I missed the meeting, um, that's okay. I'm gonna post uh, the recording of this tonight and I'm gonna make sure that uh, it's accessible to everybody. Uh, the next thing I want to tell you is that uh, this is conversational. Um, part of uh, understanding what uh, temporary remote instruction is, is to kind of explain uh, the realities of how we, how we get here and how we actually were um, able to arrive at this kind of uh, uh, mode of learning um, in such a short order. Uh, some of you have experienced um, online classes before and you you probably note with uh, some not really not really surprised but you know maybe a kind of funny that we're using the term temporary remote instruction and we're not calling it online classes and the reason for that is that um, any any of our courses and of course outlines have to go through a very specific curriculum development and approval process for the community college system um, that's something that is in the law. It's part of what we call Title V. And um, the use of online instruction has rules and requirements to be met for uh, things that are associated with accessibility, uh, things that are associated with um, captioning and um, other things that, well, to politely put it, we're bending those rules right now so that we can um, get to a place where those of us who have been teaching face-to-face -face can bring our stuff into um, an extended uh, remote um, method of teaching. So um, I, I know that 
there are going to be a fair number of questions and things that you know we'll be resolving as we go along, uh, technology being uh, certainly one of them. Uh, the fact that you're here today means that you're accessing um, this video either by way of uh, a telephone, uh, a smartphone, uh, a pad device, or uh, some type of computer, desktop, laptop. Uh, and it could be Chrome, it could be uh, Windows PC, or it could be a Mac. And, you know, um, Zoom doesn't care, uh, but our software does. And uh, the software that we use in SolidWorks uh, cares very much um, what uh, we use because it's only um, uh, usable with uh, Windows PC. So there's gonna, there are going to be some issues. There are going to be some things we're going to have to talk about as we go forward. So um, Engineering Graphics One, you are here for a variety of reasons. Um, you're here either to complete Engineering Graphics One in anticipation of transfer to a university. Um, you're here to complete Engineering Graphics One combined with Engineering Graphics Two um, and transfer to the university, or you're here taking Engineering Graphics One, Two, and then the print reading course for a certificate, or you're here as a drafting technology uh, major uh, for an AS degree or a certificate of achievement in drafting technology. So everybody's got a wide variety of reasons, and part of the um, my desire to talk to you today, especially in the afternoon, is that many of you may have had classes before uh, our meeting here today and this afternoon. I, I will tell you that um, I've been involved in uh, lots of communication with my colleagues over the last uh, week and a half and, and uh, have been sitting in on a number of uh, webinars and, and informational type of um, uh, exchanges to help us transition our information into uh, Canvas and get it uploaded, uh, so to speak, in ways that uh, I would say a, a half of, of the faculty at Butte are not accustomed to at all. Um, and it's very uncomfortable. And so in keeping with um, wanting to make this as comfortable as I can for you, I wanna make sure you know that my interest is in, in your success and I can be extraordinarily creative with that and with that, here's what I'm going to tell you right up front. I am not going to be creating Zoom meetings for you to have to attend every time our class is scheduled. I really can't do that. And the reason I can't do that is that all of our lives have changed dramatically with the uh, isolation and with the distancing protocols that we're following right now to flatten the curve. Um, if, if you don't know what flatten the curve is, then um, you know basically trying to change the trajectory of what this natural course of the virus is going to do. Um, and what this virus is gonna do is peak probably sometime in the next uh, six, eight weeks, but who knows. Um, and the only thing I can tell you that I know at this point is that face-to-face -face instruction at Butte College for the spring 2020 term is over. And from, the 13th of March forward, this temporary remote instruction is going to be our way of, of getting through to a completion. So um, in doing that and in not wanting to make our time together cramped into making you fit into the same space and time of a class that we used to have in LRC 116 from 3 to 515 on Mondays and Wednesdays, Zoom will be used as a resource tool, and I'll talk more about that in a few minutes, and I'll talk about some of the adjustments that I'm making to our project work and the development that we're doing so that we can get through this semester. So um, some of your teachers may not be taking that same attitude. Some of your teachers may be really uncomfortable with the idea that their material uh, can be uh, converted into short videos or converted into um, other means of, of uh, introducing you to new material. And they're gonna wanna have you in a room and they're gonna wanna constrain you around a lecture that's live um, and they're gonna count attendance for that and so on and so forth. I just, again, wanna reassure you that I don't intend to work that way um, because even though we call this temporary remote instruction, the sheer reality is, is that it's online 
by another name. It's still online instruction. And I have to be really sensitive to that as your teacher, because many of you are finding yourselves taking care of children uh, because K-12 schools are closed uh, or unavailable to you for face-to-face -face, uh, care and, and learning of your children. Um, my wife is a charter school principal, a K-8 charter school principal. Um, it's very different and very much a challenge. So your families are very much impacted by this. And I want to be sensitive to that. Also, the nature of employment has changed dramatically while businesses are closed or unavailable to you. And many of you are finding yourselves either with a change in the scope of what your job duties are if you're working, or you may be finding yourself not working. And I understand that I'm sensitive to that. And that's another reason why I don't want to make this very constrained or feel very formal um, as we go forward. So before I go any further, are there any questions or anything, anything that's on your mind at all that's kind of in the moment? Um, please use the chat uh, tool if you'd like. At the bottom and center of your screen, you can click that, write a question, or you can unmute your mic. This is a discussion, so it's available. Um, just like we'd be in class. So don't hesitate to unmute and give me a question. Okay, I'm either doing a really super job or, and I'll leave it to you to fill in the blank, okay? Um, I will say one thing that will continue without fail, without a doubt, is the jokes are just as cheesy online as they are face to face, perhaps even cheesier as time goes on. Don't know. Um, all I know is that I, uh, I'm FaceTiming my grandchildren a lot because my children um, are very sensitive and concerned that because I'm so old, uh, that they are uh, concerned that I'm at risk. So they don't want me to get sick, which I think is code for they don't want me to get their kids sick. Who knows? Um, all right. I'm hoping that got smiles, but all I see are your names and uh, David's uh, wonderful uh, golly whopper little polywog, which I think is really cool. Um, so let me go forward and say, how are we gonna conduct this class if we're not gonna do face-to-face? -face? So historically, I rely very heavily. Is, is that a question or just a logging in? Cool beans. Just stop me at any time if you want to. Um, usually, I rely very heavily on a combination of demonstration, giving you tutorials and letting you learn in a, in a certain way. So with the demonstration part not available to us in the lab where I can give individual instruction or I can give individual problem solving, um, I am going to make available uh, tutorials and videos for all of the flashlight parts that we're working on. Now you say to yourself, self, you know, the tutorials work fine. I get that, but it may not be enough. You say to yourself, well, um, I didn't think we were going to work on the flashlight. Well, we are because that's a project and it's one that we can complete um, in this environment. So in exchange for giving you videos and making those available um, uh, to you through Canvas, what I am also going to do is make sure that the time that I'm usually scheduled to meet your class will be in what I call an open Zoom room time. So my plan is, is that because I'm full-time faculty, number one, I don't have another job. Uh, number two, I do not have uh, a need for going into the mode of uh, double dipping my time um, and going and doing a home improvement project while I should be teaching. The time that I'm normally scheduled to be with you will be an open Zoom room time, and you're welcome to join me. Hey, JD, I got a question. Share screen, help you through a rough, a rough patch. You move on. We keep conducting our business through Canvas. And I'm hoping that makes sense to you because I want Zoom to be a resource for us. I don't want it to be um, a required uh, tool, which in, in turn kind of becomes uh, uh, more of a challenge to, to get through. Um, the second thing I want to tell you is that there are going to be a couple of projects after the flashlight and there will be some more demonstrations that I will put up. So there'll be far more video interaction that um, can take place. Uh, and 
I'm also going to put this offer in front of you that many of you are already very good modelers. Um, and some of you even come from um, perhaps having some high school background in this. And I'm great with that. Always have been and continue to be. And in supporting your success, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put an offer out there. And it's an aggressive offer, but it's an offer nonetheless. So when all the grades are tabulated through the 13th of March, um, there is nobody with a failing grade. So um, in my other classes, my intention is to really help students move forward, including uh, the potential of pursuing certification. So I am making certification, uh, remote certification available that would require you to have a, you know, a, a well-running computer that can run SolidWorks um, a good and stable internet connection, and three hours of available time. But I'm gonna start um, taking appointments for certification as early as uh, two weeks from now or week 10. And the reason for that is, especially in my Engineering Graphics 2 class, is that um, some of those students like yourselves are in STEM patterns where, as I said while we were in school, uh, I'm competing for your time. And I get that because our math department is doing things differently. Our physics department is doing things differently. Physical science, chemistry, we're all doing things differently. And in that, um, the priority is still going to go to those STEM classes. I get it. Uh, and I accept that. Um, so in keeping with that, the potential exists that if you certify and you pass first time through, then I will award you for that with an A and you will be done with the class after you've certified. No need to continue. Um, your grade will be tabulated uh, and you'll be issued a passing grade of A. And that's if you pass the first time through. A Couple of you will, few of you will, many of you will. I don't know, I can't predict. I'm not giving you a number. Historically, coming out of drafting two certifications run about a 30% first time pass rate. That's not bad. It's better at about a 70% first time pass rate in engineering graphics too, because the preparation's a little bit more thorough. So if you don't pass the first time, can you take it again? Yes. If you pass after the second attempt, then I'll award you with a B. And I will still allow you to achieve an A if you pursue an additional project to completion. Now, my want for this is, even though certifications would happen, I'm still gonna hold everyone accountable to the completion of the flashlight. And I'm gonna hold you accountable to the completion of the flashlight project so that that is our major project for the year and best prepares you for CSWA certification. And I hope that makes sense to you. So that's still on the table to do. The projects after will happen for anybody who basically is not wanting to certify, you'll pursue that in drafting eight. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Then those additional projects will be uh, continuing to off, be offered to you and completed. But what won't happen for any of that is I will not allow any student who stays in regular contact with me, who continues to do your best with the best of intentions, um, I will not give you any grade less than a C. So if you were to walk away right now um, and after having completed only the number of parts that you've completed um, and it's just too much, there's too much on your plate, there's too much to try and take care of, your technology isn't quite what you need it to be, um, then all I ask before you decide to walk away with uh, not staying in touch with me, because there's going to be a consequence for that, that you stay in touch with me at the very least. If at some point you certify, I'll raise your grade. My, my longstanding uh, tradition has always been to incentivize uh, the outcomes of the class by giving you an opportunity to certify and uh, raising your grade from wherever it is, one grade level uh, after certification, regardless of the number of times it takes to pass. So my offer is aggressive to incentivize certification. Some of you may wanna pursue that so you can call it done and kind of put this entire semester in the rear view mirror. I get it and I wanna help you get there. For those who wanna continue and 
you know, finish out the semester and finish it strong and work at the pace that you've already established for yourselves, then that will continue and the Zoom room will be open at our regularly scheduled time for help. But you don't have to be in there. You don't have to do anything in the Zoom room. You can work on your own. All I ask is that at least once a week, you stay in touch with me. Send me a text, send me an update. Let me know how things are going. Send me a chat inside uh, the chat tool uh, in Canvas. Uh, send me an email and give me an update. I will most likely be giving you uh, some type of participation assignment that will query you about how you're doing. So that's a way that if you did the very least is just stay in touch with me with the little query that I send out. And by little, I just mean a brief, how's it going today? Tell me what's going on. Uh, tell me what uh, challenges you might have. Great. Then we're done and you're continuing to stay in contact with me. So here's where we are. It's week nine of the semester because the clock for the semester didn't change and it didn't stop. Our rules and regulations allow us to drop a student through week 12 at the 75% completion mark. But if you reach week nine and it's before week 13, it takes a serious and compelling reason for a student to get out of the class with a W. I can drop you at any point with an F or an FW, but I don't wanna do that. And I'm not gonna be issuing any Fs or FWs this semester. What I would rather do is preserve your academic integrity so that the worst case scenario is at week 12, you may come to the conclusion that uh, a withdrawal would be the best opportunity for you. Um, but that has financial aid implications and none of those rules to my understanding and knowledge have changed that an FW puts your financial aid in peril. And if you drop to less than a full-time student status, which is 12 units, you may find yourself um, in a difficult uh, circumstance with financial aid to uh, maintain your award. So I don't wanna hurt you. That's not my intention. But the consequence of not staying in touch with me is that if I don't hear from you again, I don't hear from any student again, or if I just notice that all your activity is trailed off, I'll make every attempt to get in touch with you. But if I can't get in touch with you, You've taken a job out of the area. You've just said, screw it. I understand. I will drop you with a W by the end of week 12. And I hope that makes sense. Not doing that to be a bad guy. I'm doing that to essentially help you. So what I'm hoping to do is give you lots of opportunities to succeed, even some opportunities to excel um, in, in an aggressive uh, way through certification ahead of the game. What that would mean for you in engineering graphics too, by the way, uh, if you were to certify CSWA, is that in engineering graphics too, uh, then you would be eligible to certify for the CSW professional, the CSWP. It's another test, it's a four hour test, and um, uh, something that I can make available to you uh, to take next semester. And if you decide, I don't want to certify today, but you might come back a couple of years from now and you're ready to certify. You've been in the, in the field a couple of years. You're at your senior year uh, at the university in an engineering program and you feel ready to certify. My deal stands. I will accept you back um, and you're more than welcome to come and certify uh, with me in the lab. You're a part of the community. You remain a part of the community. So does certification cost you money? No. Am I asking for anything out of your pocket? No. Am I asking for your commitment to do the very best you can under some really challenging conditions? Absolutely, because that's what we're here to do. But not to be unreasonable. And, and that's what I wanna make sure I'm trying to keep it within a, a comfortable uh, way for you to be successful in the class. I'll pause there again, just to see if there's any questions that have come up. I don't see anything in the chat. Feel free to uh, knock out a question in the chat uh, area or uh, unmute your mic and, and talk to me. You guys know I'm not that good at explaining, so feel free to ask. Look for the loopholes. There could be some.
or I just put you to sleep. Okay, well, I'll keep moving. Let's talk technology for a minute. Some of you um, have moved forward to, and you've had uh, access to a PC, a Windows-based PC, and have had SolidWorks during the semester. Terrific. Um, you're uh, ahead of the game at this point. Uh, let's see. So you may have already said it, but I have a question regarding how often we will be having a project due. So I will give you due dates for everything. And basically my due date for everything is going to be the end of the semester. So I'm not going to give you a lot of in uh, uh, intermediate hurdles to get over. Uh, I'm pretty much going to try and make the entirety of any project I give you done at the end of the semester. It's going to be a mess for me to sort out at the end of the semester, but that's okay. That's what I'm, that's what I'm here to do. Um, and I want to make sure that the deadlines are reasonable. Christian, does that help answer your question? Okay. So Sequoia, uh, your question is, um, so what is, you know, to re kind of restate what certification is. So SolidWorks, um, in conjunction with a third party testing company has made a test available uh, in certain steps over a long period of time to basically differentiate uh, the abilities of SolidWorks users into different categories. So the first category, the first hurdle is what we call a certified SolidWorks associate. That means you have a minimum working knowledge of SolidWorks to make parts, basic parts, intermediate level parts, moving into the advanced parts, basic assemblies, maybe intermediate level assemblies and intermediate uh, uh, and advanced mates uh, to put those assemblies together. And then uh, some drafting questions that go with it. And it's a, it's a non-expiring uh, certification. It means that you and about a million of your fellow uh, SolidWorks users out in the universe um, have the same certification level. And many companies use it as kind of their minimum threshold of acceptance for a technical professional or even an engineer. In other words, um, they'll only accept a CSWA certification. So it's, it's pretty um, necessary. And I kind of look at it this way is that if you are a student at Butte and then, and you get the uh, engineering graphics one, engineering graphics two done, and you're an engineering graphics one and two student at Yuba College or at Shasta College, then one of you gets certified, the other doesn't. An employer is going to look more to certification being the driving factor of a hiring decision than they are whether or not you have the engineering graphics one and two done at Shasta or Butte. In other words, it just happens that way. And the reason why mostly is that it's an industry driven test by industry people and industry driven means I don't create it. I'm not grading it. I only proctor it, which means I'm available to assure that you're following the rules. Um, and then you complete the test, you give the answers and the answers then are computed immediately and you get an answer right away. So you get an answer immediately. Nobody's looking at your parts. You're turning in answers to a multiple choice set of questions based on the parts. So I'll have some study material for you and I will make um, additional curriculum available. Now I said there's no cost to you. But at the beginning of the semester, I mentioned a, a company called Solid Professor. They, in fact, um, have reduced their price. Uh, and I, I will have a link for you this afternoon if you're interested. It's not required um, that if uh, uh, you're entering into um, their curriculum now, they have a prep uh, for CSWA. It's designed it's about 18 hours worth of uh, uh, basically lessons that you go through and complete, and it prepares you very well for the CSWA. So that's another way for you to complete. Um, still gotta get the flashlight done, but it's still another way for you to complete. Um, you get that done, you have a very good chance of passing CSWA. So let me get back to what certification means at other levels. The next level would be a CSW professional. Um, Engineering Graphics 2 students can take that. 
And the difference between certification at the associate and then certification at the professional is the associate asks you to make a part. You give an answer about the part, you're done with that part. At the professional level, you're given a certain specification to make the part, then you answer questions about that part, then you use that part in further work in mating and the assembly work as you go forward. If there's, it, you can kind of get a sense that the issue you may create in the first answer could compound to becoming a multiple uh, set of answer issues when you go to make the assembly. So it's a much more comprehensive test. The CSWA is a three hour test, 180 minutes, no more, no less. The CSWP is a four hour test, 100 and whatever 120 and 60 is 180 minutes, um, uh, no more, no less. So in that four hour period of time, you'll be completing and you'll get instant gratification. Um, and we have had about 10 students who have uh, taken the CSWP uh, at engineering graphics two level. Uh, we've had three pass the first time. We've had uh, about five pass on second attempt and we've had two that have not been successful yet. So the carrot is out there, if you will. We can do this um, in a way that is going to help you complete and complete these courses with a competency to be able to move forward in engineering and move forward in the technical world um, with confidence. That's my goal. Some of you are, are very much um, uh, in a learning style that is uh, desiring of the community that, that we have and, and that to be uh, maintaining a part of that. And again, just to reiterate, that's why I'm gonna keep the, the Zoom room open, so to speak, for help and issues that if nothing more, hey, just come in. I mean, we, we can't be in the physical space together because of uh, distance protocols, but um, you know, I can still crack jokes in a Zoom room and I can still hopefully be a part of helping your success by answering questions um, in that mode. Okay, long answer, Sequoia. Hope, hopefully certification got a little clearer for you. Any other questions at this point? I'll just keep moving forward. Okay, so um, what's gonna happen as we you know, work towards the end of the semester and we get past week 12, we're all still in this to win it, we're all still in this finishing strong, are we likely to have some type of final project that is going to be uh, used as a test or final? And the answer to that is yes, because I don't have a project to give you um, that will test the same number of competencies outside the classroom as I would inside the classroom. So I tell you on the first day of a face-to-face -face class that my goal is that um, we either have a final or we have a comprehensive project. In this case, I don't have a project to give you, so I'm gonna replace it. There will be a final. That only applies to individuals who stay, who have desired not to certify, who want to finish at the pace that they're finishing. Um, and if you're a second attempt pass for CSWA and you end up with a B in the course, you can advance that to an A. Or if you end up being someone who returns um, in week 13 and suddenly things get better for you and start to open up time-wise, um, I will honor that as long as you've stayed in contact with me. I will honor you um, picking up late and trying to finish strong. But I said, no Fs, no FWs, no Ds will be issued in this course. And I hope that makes sense to you um, in exchange for staying in contact with me and trying to continue doing the best you possibly can. Okay. All right, so in the immediate, um, I've kind of been using Canvas as a space to communicate with you just what's been going on with um, the bigger picture when we return to school and all that. Um, I have uh, the, the majority of, of the grading done. Um, uh, most of it I've been tabulating and just not paying too much attention to Canvas, but I will have all of the Canvas data entered and your grade will be 
known up through the 13th. But as I said, nobody is in a position of being less than a C at this point in time. That's great. And all that did was to calibrate where I stand in terms of the go forward plan. So kind of look at it this way. Whatever we have left, think of it as you still have the maximum number of points you need to get an A in the course. How you get it is now going to be a creative process that I'm going to give you some choices on how to do it. Either stay in, work diligently, um, make it a part of your week, study for CSWA as an alternative, pass CSWA first attempt or second attempt and then finish a project or stay with me, um, walk away with a C and then hopefully in the future raise it to a B with certification in the future. So lots of different ways, lots of different um, things that I want to help uh, to um, you know, safeguard your success as much as possible in the course. So I'll pivot on um, technology for a minute. We, um, we have some students, uh, um, and thank you all for uh, filling out the survey uh, that you did uh, for me. That was very helpful, and at least in terms of understanding a, a macro level, how many of you um, are PC, how many of you are challenged by the fact that you may not be PC. Some of you are addressing your computer issues, uh, not having a PC by, by um, trying to uh, uh, extend your finances to get a computer. I get that and that's a huge commitment. I thank you for that. Um, the school is trying to come up with ways to be creative in giving uh, access to either loaner um, computing power or uh, in the form of a very much incentivized price maybe from computers for classrooms for a used laptop. I don't have a lot of details for that. And the information that's been put out on email has really been related more to staff and faculty. Um, believe it or not, you know, there's a number of our faculty members and staff members who don't have a computer at home. They have, a, they have an iPad. Um, and now suddenly thrust into the world of having a compute at home, um, we had to come up with ways to help them. But I'm not, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in helping you. So a couple things that have come to light. Uh, we are working on communicating with Amazon Web Services to see if there's a way that we can, with permission from SolidWorks, that we can virtualize SolidWorks and essentially make SolidWorks available in a virtual machine through the web. We've done it before. Uh, we did it with our own system a few years ago um, that uh, most of you weren't around at that point in time to know what that was. Um, but if we do it with Amazon Web Services, uh, we know that there's precedent for that because MIT's engineering program uh, has done that uh, for their students. Um, I even contacted MIT to see if there's some way that we could be a part of their virtualizing and I haven't gotten an answer yet. So I'm trying to be very creative with the technology limitation that we have. Here's something that I can offer to you that we tested just this afternoon. I will have some dedicated machines at my home loaded with SolidWorks, loaded with AutoCAD, loaded with Revit, where I will, for those who truly have no ability to connect uh, other than um, a, you know, maybe a Chromebook or something um, of the like uh, at home, that uh, these dedicated computers will be available through TeamViewer. And so TeamViewer is a desktop sharing tool, and it allows us then to have you log in remotely to that machine, the machines at my house. That means I'm, I'm kind of here to monitor tech support if there's issues. Um, they can be put in a remote mode so that they can be accessed by you, um, and we can still run uh, SolidWorks very effectively using TeamViewer. I have a Comcast account. I've got a pretty fast internet connection. Um, so as long as we have a, a fast internet connection and the ability for whatever machine or device you're using to use TeamViewer, we can do it. TeamViewer is even available for a smartphone. I don't recommend that we try and go down to the level of a smartphone to try and run SolidWorks because, as you know, some of the, the right-click context menu types of things are going to be really challenging uh, to try and complete with a smartphone. But again, 
I'm one creative guy and uh, creativity, you know, is often um, induced when we uh, don't have much choice except find a way to succeed. So there are some technology solutions. I probably will be asking you a few more questions about uh, technology to make sure that if you don't have access to technology, uh, that I know more precisely what you do have access to, um, that we can put you in touch through TeamViewer. That would have to be done on a shared basis, probably would have to happen in such a way that uh, I'm able to schedule a block of time for you. So maybe uh, student A would use it, um, you know, during our regularly scheduled time, uh, work schedule pending and allowing or family schedule allowing or pending. Uh, that you could do it, you know, between 3 and 5.15 on Monday. Student B could do it 3 to 5.15 on Wednesday. Then we would set up some open appointments for other times during the week. And because those machines can be set up to um, remote in without my presence, um, then any time of day in a 24-7 arrangement can be, it can be available. So, um, I think we have some, some solutions for the exceptions uh, to at least minimally be able to, to have you all run SOLIDWORKS in an effective way. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, you guys are so noisy. I don't know what to do. I can sit here and look at the screen too. Any questions? Yeah, Brandon. I was just waving at you. Well, thanks. I appreciate the wave. I'll take it. Anybody else with a question? Richard, I'm surprised you haven't said anything because I know you're a busy guy. Uh, no, I'm just going along with it. I found all my files from last semester, so I'm just going over the battery plate and bulb. Okay. I will right. have a question when we get to the bulb. Yep. Uh, so, like I said, unlike my normal um, my normal habit of not making any video tutorials available for the flashlight parts, I will make video tutorials available for the flashlight parts this semester on an exception basis. So. Um, I don't like to do that because I like to keep that kind of stuff working, uh, you know, as we work our time together in the classroom. But like I told you, I'm not, uh, you know, in the classroom. I wasn't, uh, I was kind of done being overbearing and trying to, you know, uh, elicit and solicit a bunch of answers. You all have a routine that you're accustomed and, and you know, uh, developing as you go along that's effective for you. I don't want to challenge that. Um, I want to make sure that it works. For, for you, for your success. So the other thing you can kind of count on this week is we've, we've fulfilled our commitment for connecting this week. Um, and I will re-post uh, Canvas with the flashlight project. Um, and I will, you know, take the other things, uh, if there's anything that's kind of hanging on there in the future, I'll take that away so we can concentrate our efforts on the flashlight and all the resource materials and the tutorials um, that were available on paper, I have all in PDF format and live binders. So all that will be available to you along with the videos uh, as well as we go forward. If you haven't finished the first 10 parts, if you haven't, uh, finish the revolves, the practice revolves, all of that. I'm being very lenient with that. It's not consequential to determine whether or not you're going to fall under a C or not. So we can turn stuff in as we go, I guess, like as we finish them. Yep. Okay. Yep. And, and, you know, uh, thank you for the question, Julissa, because, you know, um, based on all the other things that you're having to work on and catch up with and, and keep up with in your other courses, um, it would be unfair for me to give you uh, really imposed uh, dates that are kind of arbitrary and artificial because we can do that. Um, I'd rather just say, 
you turn them in as you go along and the due date's gonna be the end of our semester together. I'll accept it up to the last day. Okay, sounds good. Austin, you're awful quiet. Yeah, I'm at a glass shop right now. Oh, well. <laughs> My internet went down over spring break and it hasn't gotten back up. Oh, so so you're at the shop right now. Do you have do you have proper papers to be there? If you want to see the standards of glass, <laughs> all all the technical standards that have ever existed right here. That's actually way cool. I like that. It's not all of them, but no, it's no. it's a lot of them. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Also several stacks of architectural prints. Nice. Yeah. Bad time for it to go down. Yeah. Uh, called at and they told me to email them. Really? Yeah. That, that's ironic since you have no internet to do that. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about that. Right? Yeah. Lucas, any questions? Augustine, any questions? Natalie? Kate, David, okay, Augustine said none here, all right, well, here's the way I'm going to play it, um, I did this with drafting eight this morning, and it goes like this, I'm going to go ahead and slowly turn my head, I'm going to tell you I'm done, and if you have questions, hang out in the room, because I'm not going anywhere, um, if you have other things that you need to be doing, um, then I will uh, disengage my requirement for you to be here and know that no, there's not another Zoom meeting where you have to be here. It's Zoom meetings that you would want to be to solve your problems. Does that make sense? Oh, one last thing about office hours. I have published office hours. Those will be maintained. They'll be Zoom based. My plan is, is that again, if you, if you would like to meet, in an office hour, I usually meet everyone in an office hour, first come, first serve. I'll do the same thing, open Zoom room, there it is. What I'll do is I'll set up a waiting room so that if you wanna have a one-on-one -on -one meeting, if there's something you wanna talk about where it's not a, a you know, for public knowledge or public uh, need to know, then we'll meet one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm always available by text, email, phone call, um, you know, usually I'd say a cup of coffee, but unfortunately that would have to be done virtually. So I'll have my coffee, you have yours, um, and we'll maintain a, a level of connection. But office hours, same as what's in the published syllabus. And I'll modify the syllabus so that everybody understands what my grading uh, opportunity is here going forward. Sound good? Sounds yes. good. All right. So I'm going to turn my head just real slowly here, and I'm just going to say, all right, you can check out now. See you later. <laughs> All right. Bye, JD. Thanks, JD. Don't get sick. Thank you. Yes. All right. Good to see you all, sort of. <laughs> see ya. <laughs>